I want to make an announcement at the top of this video that I have created a community on Locals. I will put the link in the description below. If you're not already on Locals, you should sign up so you can join my community. At the moment, there is no exclusive content behind a paywall. It's mostly a place right now where I can communicate to you en masse because I do not have the community tab available to me in YouTube because I do not have enough subscribers and I have no idea when I'm going to reach that threshold and YouTube keeps deleting comments from my videos so I'll see comments from some of you in the emails that I get, but then when I go to reply to the comment, it's gone. So I felt like creating a locals community would also be a place for us to have better discussions without censorship from YouTube. So I will cross post all of my videos there. If you would prefer to post your comments on locals to make sure your comment isn't censored, you will have that option. And I will post random other things in there so I can let you know what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about lately, what's coming up for the channel. So I hope you will join me on locals. And now on to the video. Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to the first episode of The Eighth Square's Corner. You might notice a change in scenery. That is a clever visual trick to indicate to you, the viewer, that there is something different about this video. For a while, I've wanted to find a way to put out content more frequently, but the kind of video that I usually put out is highly edited, even when I rant, and it takes time to pull those together. And there are so many random things that I want to talk about that I will never get to if I'm only putting out content once a week at most. So this is an experiment. There will be some editing, but I'm going to be a lot more off the cuff. Sometimes I will be commenting on a specific article. Sometimes I will just be talking about some random thoughts that I had that I don't really know what the point of them is, but I want to share them. My thoughts may be more half-baked than they are in my usual videos. Some will be serious, some may be more silly. My vision is to be able to put out one of these per week and one regular video per week, and you will be able to differentiate them visually based on where I'm sitting. Since it is winter, I have my cozy blanket. In this video, the general topic is women in tech and specifically fintech and more specifically crypto. I chose this topic because this morning, my husband, who knows how to trigger me, sent me an article on the topic and I realized that I had never actually talked about this on my channel in its own video. I think I've made comments here and there on other videos about this topic or sentiments similar to what I will say here, but this is a topic that I think a lot about because the issue of women in tech is one that is near and dear to the heart of feminists. And so it was something that was near and dear to my heart when I was a feminist. And it's a perennial topic. It never goes away. And my husband works in tech and has spent most of his career in fintech. And he also trades crypto. He's working on his own blockchain project. So this is something that we talk a lot about. So I'm just going to go through this article which I will link in the description so you can read it if you so choose and just give some of my random thoughts on this article and the general topic. So the article is called Mentorship, Inclusivity, and Education Will Encourage More Women to Enter Crypto. This article was published this morning, a day after International Women's Day, in case you missed that. I managed to mostly stay off of social media for my own sanity. The article mentions a roundtable that they hosted with eight leading women in the blockchain and cryptocurrency sector to discuss ways to bring more women into the fintech space, and that the common themes focused on education, mentorship, and inclusivity. What a surprise that is to me. I cannot even explain to you in words. So the article talks about two totally different things. One, about how to get more women to trade and invest with cryptocurrency, and then how to get women to work in tech in the cryptocurrency sector. New data apparently shows that more women are making cryptocurrencies a larger part of their portfolio, but men are still the majority when it comes to crypto investments, which should be no surprise to anyone who pays attention to anything, because most traders in general are men. Most people interested in playing with the financial markets are men. Cryptocurrency is a market-based system, so it's no different. It's just shiny and new and a buzzword. Men on average are less risk-averse than women, and financial trading is a risky endeavor. So it's not a surprise that you see men being the ones predominantly engaged in financial trading. Even in current year, 
when women have all the opportunity open to them to do so also. Cryptocurrency is now becoming mainstream. Women tend to feel more safe in numbers when things are popular and known than the unknown. So yeah, more women are adding cryptocurrency now because it's all buzzwordy and in the mainstream, even though it's been around for a long time. Some content head at One Crypto Exchange points out that women play a large role in household financial decisions, but cryptocurrency is market-based trade not purchasing consumer products. Purchasing crypto is not like purchasing a new couch. You buy a couch to use in your home, for it to be functional and for it to look nice. I'm not an expert on crypto or financial trading, so I'm speaking totally off the cuff and being very simplistic, but I'm just trying to say that buying Bitcoin is not the same as buying furniture or a car or food for your household. They spoke to this blockchain and fintech advisor who said that traditional markets face similar issues in terms of male dominance, which is what I already said. But she believes that the problem that women currently struggle with has to do with participation and that she's not surprised by the lack of women using crypto exchanges, but she hopes to see more women involved with designing blockchain platforms and protocols, which is a totally different thing. She said, quote, if blockchain designs and infrastructure get done at the enterprise level and there aren't enough women, there won't be anything created by female thinking patterns. This is the biggest issue we face today. The biggest issue is that crypto is being designed without female thinking patterns. This is one of the core issues with feminism. The contradiction. On the one hand, men and women are exactly the same. On the other hand, there is such a thing as female thinking patterns. How do we reconcile the two? I suppose to give feminists their due, some of them might say that, yes, men and women think differently, but we are of equal value. And the problem is that men are valued more, male thinking patterns are valued more, and we must make sure that the female thinking patterns get in there. I think that's a load of hooey. I mean, I do think that on average, there's a certain kind of way that men tend to think and a certain way that women tend to think. But what evidence is there that designing blockchain with female thinking patterns will improve it? That's not how it works. Chess was invented by a man. Should we get some women to go in there and redesign chess with female thinking patterns? Because there were no female thinking patterns in there, so it's all crap. But the really easy way to see the hypocrisy is to flip the situation and ask yourselves, how would feminists react if there was some female dominated space where women were designing everything and someone said, you know what? That's great, but you really need some men to come in there and make sure that male thinking patterns are a part of this. You can bet your bottom dollar that feminists would throw a grade A hissy fit. So fuck off with your bullshit about female thinking patterns not being a part of it. Nothing is stopping them from getting into the crypto space if that's where they want to work. Nothing is stopping women from working in tech if they want. But it's not enough about removing the barriers. Women need to be invited into these spaces. They need to be encouraged. And you know what? That's probably true because women are higher on eroticism, which means they're more sensitive to negative emotion, which means they're more sensitive to rejection. Fine, create all your programs to encourage women to get into tech, but accept the fact that it's always gonna be an uphill battle because the men working in tech didn't need their hand held, didn't need to be encouraged. This is what they're inherently interested in. This is what they do with their free time. That's why they not only get into tech, they stay in tech and they climb through the ranks if that's what they want, which is not the case for everyone. My brother works in tech also, and he is very content to just do what he does, clock in, clock out. He has no aspirations or ambition. And the only reason that feminists push this shit is because they know that tech is an industry where you can make money, tech is an industry with prestige, with power, and cryptocurrency is the new frontier, it's the big rising thing, that's where the opportunity is, and as everyone should know by now, feminism isn't about women, it's about power. This roundtable asked for ideas from the panelists on how to increase female participation in crypto and blockchain. One idea was to emphasize blockchain and cryptocurrency education from a young age with storybooks that talk 
talk about the topic being pushed early on. Like you don't teach your kids about web development or coding. You can make sure they are aware of their options, but we don't need to educate our children about blockchain. Just like you don't educate your children about databases. That's from the working in tech side. If you're talking about the trading side, again, it's not a difference of kind. It's a difference of degree from financial trading. So if you're going to teach your kid about general financial trading when they're very small, then I guess go ahead, throw crypto in there. But I don't feel like most parents are teaching their kids about the stock market. But educational content is very important, especially as more newcomers enter the space. Because findings show that despite increasing interest in cryptocurrency among women, men feel more confident about their understanding of crypto. So what? Men feel more confident about their understanding of most things because men feel more confident in their knowledge in general. Women on average are higher on neuroticism, meaning they experience more negative emotion. They tend to have less confidence in themselves inherently. They need more encouragement from others and validation to feel welcome and okay. And I'm not excluding myself from this. I think I need less than the average women, but it's still a pattern I notice in myself too, but not to the extent that I need it. I don't need anyone's permission or invitation to go do something that I feel called to do. The problem is that most women that are being pushed into tech are not being called to do this. They are not inherently interested in the actual job that they would have. They are interested in some vague idea of success and prestige and power, validation. They have no idea what the actual day in and day out of the job is like. They have no idea what the actual career trajectory looks like. They share that there's a site called CoinMarketCap, which has a platform that has how-to guides and gamified content, and there's an equal number of male and female readers. Cool! Women are out there educating themselves, so no one is stopping them, right? But no, getting women interested in blockchain in general is crucial. But someone else they spoke to said that we shouldn't be focusing on ways to get women interested in technology. The bigger issue is understanding how to get women to stay in the industry, which is a point they always come back to when discussing the women in tech industry. First, they'll say that women are being prevented from getting in. Then when you get them to agree that that's not happening, they'll say, well, yes, women go into tech but then they don't stay because the culture, because it's not friendly to women, etc, etc. But crypto is promising for women because it's an unusually welcoming space. And being part of an inclusive company is extremely important in terms of career growth and success. Many of the women panelists agreed that mentorship and inclusivity are both important factors when it comes to getting women involved long-term in blockchain and cryptocurrency. Another woman says that it's important to find mentors you admire who will support and guide you throughout this space. Guide you through what that is specific to cryptocurrency? Should everyone who's trying to build any kind of career find a mentor? Yes. Whether you're working in the corporate space, whether you're freelancing, whether you work in design or accounting or tech, because working at a big company is different from working at a startup, is different from working for yourself. And yes, there are nuances to the different sectors of the industry. FinTech is a bit different than other sectors of the industry. But this is not something specific to getting women into crypto and blockchain. This is a general thing that most people can benefit from, having a mentor to guide you. It's a thing that women seem to need more than men. It's a thing that women seem to need when it comes to tech, but I see no reason to believe that having a mentor will make up for the fact that you're not inherently interested in something in the first place, that someone had to get you interested in that field in that job. Why do most women do the jobs that they do? I didn't go work in publishing because I knew it was a female dominated industry that would be friendly to women or because people told me that this is a suitable job for a woman and I wanted to work in tech, but that's not a job for a woman. No, I chose to go into publishing because reading and writing were things that I had been interested in inherently since I was a small child and I was good at them. It combined passion and talent. And I learned as I got older that I was also good at editing. So it was a natural fit. I was drawn to it. And I'm sure if you asked most women why they got into the jobs that they did, it was because of some inherent interest that they had. I'm sure if you asked a lot of women who work in healthcare related fields, they would say they enjoy helping people on a personal level, not in some abstract sense, like they built some piece of technology that improves people's lives, but day to day, they literally work with individuals and see how they're helping them. They see their impact. 
Or if you talk to women who teach, they would probably say something about how they love having an impact on the next generation, how they love touching those individual lives, how they love helping the kids who have no one else to believe in them, how they like sharing their knowledge. I doubt many of the women you ask would say that they only became a teacher because they didn't realize there was any other options available to them, or that they thought about working in tech, but they knew it was just this male-dominated sexist space, so they just shoved that dream deep down. No. If they really wanted to work in tech, they would go get the degree and they would go work in tech. And if they were really that passionate, if they got into a space in the industry that felt unfriendly to them, they would make their own space. How many damn tech startups are there? And Microsoft, which is hugely influential and powerful, started out in a garage. Bill Gates was inherently interested and passionate and had that drive and initiative. There was actually a woman who wrote a piece after the James Damore Google memo came out. She essentially said that when she was working in tech, she didn't feel like she fit in because she mostly wanted a nine to five culture and she didn't really spend time working on technical projects and furthering her education outside of work. And so she left and she started her own company with its own culture. If you don't like the space and you don't like the culture, start your own. Can you imagine the outrage if men tried to go into female dominated spaces and tell them this space isn't friendly to me and I would really like it if we could work to make this a more inclusive space for men. The flames that you would see rise up in feminist eyes, but it's fine to make these male dominated spaces more inclusive toward women. You see plenty of women thrive in tech, but what you'll notice is that most of them are more masculine of center. They align more with a male approach. They are atypical of women. They are less sensitive to negative emotion, or they come from non-American cultures. They're immigrants who have a very different worldview, who don't see a tech career as something that they're entitled to. It's something that they worked hard for and earned, and they're not going to let anyone make them feel unwelcome. But no, obviously, as this article says, it is important for women to flourish in a women-friendly environment, whatever the heck that means. And men should make it a point to mentor women in this space. You know, as long as you don't make them uncomfortable and they don't try to hit you with a Me Too accusation, as long as you only talk to them with your office door open and you don't take them to lunch where it could be misconstrued. I don't think there's anything wrong with men mentoring women in the crypto space. I don't think there's anything wrong with men mentoring men in the crypto space. I don't think there's anything wrong with women mentoring men and women mentoring women. It's just mentorship. If you prefer to have someone of your same gender because you want to know specifically things that might affect you based on your gender in your career, fine. Some women may prefer a female mentor because they're considering motherhood and they want to know how that person made it work, how they kept a work-life balance. Fine. But you shouldn't need to say, men need to mentor women. I've never known any man who wouldn't want to mentor a woman if he thought she was capable. The only thing that's changed that is the whole men are predators culture. We're going to call them out. There's a man that I know that's been my mentor for years across multiple industries. And my husband has given advice to younger people in his company, some that have been women, some that have been men. The only people who make this some kind of issue are feminists, whether they are full-time feminist activists or women in these industries who make it a point to be vocal about these issues. Women don't need to get interested in cryptocurrency any more than they need to get interested in any other thing in life. Same as men don't need to get interested in cryptocurrency any more than they need to get interested in any other thing in life. There are plenty of men who have no interest in cryptocurrency. There are plenty of men who are interested in cryptocurrency but have no idea what they're talking about. Same as with women. Just because most of the people interested in crypto and working in crypto are men doesn't mean that most men are working in crypto or interested in crypto. But feminists don't understand how statistics work. So there is much more I could say on the topic of women in tech, but I'm going to leave it there. This is my attempt to get my thoughts out relatively quickly in raw form without a lot of preparation. This is my attempt to push out more content to you guys, let you know more about what I think on different random topics, generate more discussion. So let me know what you thought about this video. If you have any suggestions for topics, articles, etc. you would like me to cover in one of these videos, please let me know. I have some ideas based on comments you guys have made to me in the past, but always happy for more thoughts from you guys. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I will have more content for you very soon.